Here we go. Welcome to Damon and I's trip to Colorado. The year is 2020. We didn't have a whole lot of adventures planned before getting on the plane, so enjoy watching where our spontaneity got us. The Denver airport is a candy land for conspiracy theories. With post-apocalyptic murals and its demon horse, Lucifer, it's hard not to wonder if there are some hidden secrets within the vast airfield. I lied to you before. The one thing I conveniently forgot to mention we planned out was booking a room at the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, which served as the inspiration of the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's novel, The Shining. All right, so we just arrived at the Stanley Hotel, about to go in. It is October 1st. Uh, we didn't really think about when we booked it, but with it being October, it's kind of a hopping season because of the hotel's history with Stephen King, and then also, you know, just paranormal activity in general. Say hi, Teresa. Hi, Teresa. All right, so anyway, here we are. So Damon and I were originally supposed to be staying at the lodge, um, which was a bit of a disappointment because we booked our room specifically in the Stanley Hotel. The lodge is located just next door to the hotel itself, which would have been fine. Um, so we went, actually, well, Damon went and talked to the front desk and he was able to just like tell them, you know, we're from Ohio, we came all this way. And she just said, oh yeah, we can get you into the Stanley Hotel, and here we are. And it's room 214, and Stephen King stayed in 217. After getting situated in our lovely hotel room, we decided to go for an evening stroll before our dinner reservations. The courtyard was absolutely magical. No wonder why King found his inspiration here. After our meal, we spent the rest of our evening exploring the hotel's walls in hopes of seeing some paranormal activity. So here we are in our hotel room at the Stanley Hotel. Uh, we're in room 214. Nothing much has happened. This is our room. Um, the only thing that did happen is last night, uh, I was taking a shower and Teresa ran in. It was like, Damon, Damon, Damon. Uh, our closet door just opened itself. So uh, other than that, which that's pretty weird, but other than that, it's not been a whole lot. So we'll, uh, we'll I mean, we're checking out today, but it's been fun so far, and we'll see what happens through the remainder of our time. You heard it from Damon. I did, in fact, watch the doorknob turn and open itself. After checking out of our eventful experience at the Stanley Hotel, we went to the entrance of the Rocky Mountain National Park. We got a couple of photos and started making our way towards Denver. We decided to stop for a bite to eat in Boulder. Damon mentioned Caribou Ranch and wondered how far away it was from us. It was only 40 minutes away, so we took a quick detour to see if we could spot the location where Chicago, Elton John, and numerous artists would record and perform. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find the studio itself, but the drive was well worth it. After we checked into our Airbnb, we went 30 minutes south to the town of Littleton to pay our respects at the Columbine High School Memorial.
We set aside today for our friend Matt that moved to Denver this year to show us around the city. For our last three days in Colorado, we took a break from a lot of driving and slowed down a bit to hang out in the city. We checked out the Blue Moon Distillery, Denver Brewery, Cheeseman Park, which is supposedly haunted as well, and the Pepsi Center, home of the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche. This trip was decided out of nowhere for both of us, and it was a great vacation after an incredibly difficult year for the world. Sometimes you have to just push yourself to do something, because you never know when you'll be able to do it again.